Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this Monday's episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde, and today we are hitting on days five and six from training camp. Day five was this past Saturday. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do an episode that day, but a lot of information came out of that practice. On top of it, we are going over today, Monday, August 1st. Can you believe it's Monday? I, I can't believe it's Monday. I, or I I can believe it's Monday, but I can't believe that it's already August. Things are going by so quickly here this year in 2022, but especially with the Chicago Bears and all the good news that we're hearing from Matt Eberflus and the coaching crew. So we're here to bring you all the updates on that. Also, Lucas Patrick's thumb situation. Brian Pringle has been tearing it up the last couple of days. The Bears did not play with pads today. As predicted, they will be doing it Tuesday and Thursday. And also, the defense is looking very strong. And fun fact, George McCaskey rides around on scooters at training camp, I guess. There's a video of it retweeted on our Twitter account, so make sure that you go and watch that. And the Bears are officially worth $5 billion, 25% higher than last year. So stay tuned for that. We're going to get into everything in just one minute. But before we hit on that, we'd like to thank today's sponsor, Stupid Card. Tired of your pizza topping sliding, office coffee distracting you while driving, grease and other stains getting on your seat, or you're just enjoying a game on the couch and don't want to lean over, look no further than these stupid car tracks. Visit www.stupidcartrade.com and use discount code J16 to get 16% off your entire order. Link in the description. We love our stupid car tray, especially on hot summer days like today, where we want to bring our, uh, you know, our canteens able to in, keep our ice nice and cold and our water. And also, you know, drinks just get super hot in the car. And the new cup holders that the stupid car tray comes with just makes it so convenient in order to carry around your canteens, keep you nice and cool on those long Chicago drives, especially in traffic as traffic is a beast all over again. If you haven't driven downtown lately, don't do it. That's all I got to say, but use code J shy to get 16% off your entire order. Link is in the description. Let's get into it today. So to start off with some comments from Matt Eberflus is that he stated today that the bears did not go pads during their private practice at Hallis hall today. That was his choice. They had the option and the NFL's uh, approval in order to go with pads on the first day of August. But Matt Ibusa said, Hey, we still got two more practices with this week on Tuesday and Wednesday. Let's hold it off for that. We got a couple guys that are injured as well, which we're going to get into in a second, but just want to keep things moving forward. So the bears did not do pads today. that will be Tuesday and Wednesday and fans will be able to see that. So if you're going tomorrow, please let us know how it goes. It sounds like it's going to be pretty awesome from what we're hearing. But also, now let's talk about the injuries that we're dealing with from the offensive side of the ball and also some Tevin Jenkins updates. So Lucas Patrick, from his injury that happened last week, is confirmed that it's a broken thumb and he will be out for the next six weeks. This does put him on the timeline, though, to be ready for week one against the San Francisco 49ers. It sounds like that he does have the starting center position locked up and good to go. There's a pro and a con. You know, obviously you want him to get better and we hope that he has a very speedy recovery, but... He's not going to be going full speed. He's not going to get any game action with this offense until week one in the regular season might be some struggles, but again, he was the third best running blocking run blocking center in the NFL for the green Bay Packers last year, which he worked very closely with offensive coordinator, Luke Getze. So we're just wishing that he gets better as soon as possible. They might be cautious with bringing him back week one to get him up to speed and rookie Doug Kramer can get some playing time. So that's very, very excited for that. Now, let's go more into the offensive line. Speaking of Doug Kramer, he didn't look bad running with the ones so far this week. According to reports, he looks like he's really getting into the flow of the NFL. And he actually even stated while he was interviewed last week that the veterans on this offensive line that Ryan Poles has brought in that have also have been here are really showing him even more attention to detail that he needs to have as an offensive lineman in the NFL. And it's given him a new look of the game. In a, in a good way. And I'm happy that he's saying it in a good way because a rookie late round pick coming from Illinois, you know, he wanted to play for the Bears. And he even said that hometown team, but also he has a new perspective of the game and how to be serious about it as a professional. And that is something that you want in a rookie, especially coming out of college. So good to hear that Doug Kramer is doing well with the one so far. You also have Sam Mustafer, who has been seen at guard, who could also fill in for the center position why Lucas Patrick is injured, but more to come on that. Now, the big topic that everyone's been kind of talking about, the new information is coming out as we speak, is uh, second-year man Tevin Jenkins is apparently having some trouble with the Bears coaching staff. Uh, According to David Kaplan, there is a high disconnect between Jenkins and the Chicago Bears staff, especially with new offensive line coach Chris Morgan. 
Not too sure what's going on with that. I am going to just say my prediction right now is that it has to deal with the fact that he was not given the starting opportunity out of the gate. Probably a little salty, you know, went from Matt Nagy, who did give him the starting opportunity, to Matt Eberflus, who doesn't care who you are and doesn't care, you know, what your past was. This is his team now, and he wants to go out there and put the best guys on the field. If Tegan Jenkins isn't bringing in someone else is, Matt Eberflus isn't afraid to put that out there. Good mentality to have from a coaching perspective, especially since the last four years have been just, you know, not the greatest in that department. But Tevin Jenkins is clearly frustrated with it. I'm sure that there's been discussion during practice between him and Chris Morgan. And it's also Chris Morgan's call who starts on the offensive line. He is the offensive line coach for the Chicago Bears. So in my opinion, yes, it sucks. There is no doubt about that, you know, and especially when you're a second round pick and you were traded up for and you were given a lot of promise coming to this team. But things change. You get a new front office, you get a new coaching staff, you get a whole new crew that's going to be running you. It's going to be a little bit different. So just stay tuned for that. I, I think that hopefully this will get figured out. He doesn't have any injuries, according to reports. So this is literally just about him and the Chicago Bears. He is showing up at House Hall to not get fined, but apparently he's not participating. So the Bears probably can give him internal fines. I don't know how that process exactly works, but stay tuned for that. Let's go to the wide receivers and tight ends. Brian Pringle, as I said at the beginning, has been ripping it up ever since he had those butterfingers a couple days ago that we talked about in one of our older podcasts. He has been doing very, very well. And I'm very proud of him because of the fact that, you know, as a fan, I'm proud of him because he had that, you know, he was arrested down in Florida a couple months ago for doing donuts in a parking lot in his car. And you know what? That happens. And, you know, that could happen to anybody, pro football athlete or not, not condoling it, by the way. I, it is considered reckless driving. But, you know, he came back and was able to bounce back, put that all aside, be on this roster, be the veteran that the Bears need, and also the player that the Bears need. And he's looking really good so far, connecting with Justin Fields. He's fast, he's strong, he's bouncing off defenders, even though there's no pads yet, which we'll find out more starting tomorrow. But Brian Pringle is looking really good. Uh, quickly, uh, rookie undrafted free agent tight end Chase Allen was at Hallis Hall, but did not participate in drills today. The big tight end out of Iowa State working hard to make this roster. There was no particular reasoning yet. I'm looking at my phone just to see what live Twitter is saying to us, but it doesn't sound like um, Chase Allen had any injuries so far, but you never know. So I'm hoping for the best that he's okay. Uh, Justin Fields is looking to continue to shine at camp and running the offense very well so far. So happy to hear that the second year quarterback in our future is going to be, is looking pretty hot so far. So happy to hear that. And then finally, running backs. Haven't talked about them too much, but I want to hit on that really quick. Is that running back second-year man Khalil Herbert uh, said in an interview last week or on Saturday, that the new Bears coaching staff are really good teachers and really know how to engage their players into the process of what they're putting, uh, putting out there on the field. Something that's been missing. Says that in you know training meetings, they'll randomly pull out a Kahoot. If you haven't played Kahoot, it's a game that you download on your phone which then you're able to answer questions in front of a group of people and get points. So he says they've been doing that. He says they've been talking to them more. It says they've been making things more engaging and more fun. It's not just, this is what you're going to do. They're trying to also take in feedback from the players. And overall, I just really like to hear that. I, this team will be better next year. Put Mark my words. This team is going to be better. Whether they make the playoffs or not, whether they win more games or not, this team will be better. It's going to be bearable to watch because it is a rebuilding. But who knows? I always think the Bears are going to shock the world. And I really feel good about this coaching staff. I really feel good about the team that we have in the field right now. No big sexy names or as many that the Bears have had in the past. But I really think that this team is going to be better. And Justin Fields is going to take a big leap in 2022-2023. Let's go to the defense real quick. Uh, I want to hit on Alan Williams, defensive coordinator, is that he is fired up to be a part of the Chicago Bears. And that is another thing that's going to help give this defense life. Uh, he said in a quote in an interview last week, I'm the coordinator of the Chicago Bears. I am the defensive coordinator, and there is no better job, maybe Matt Eberflus's position, but I am the defensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears. And the defense specifically, there is no better job. I love that. The more we learn about Alan Williams, the more we love him. I think that he is a really good ass piece to this coaching staff. And he's, I really hope that the bears keep him around for a couple of years because he's already showing the mentality of a head coach and the bears are very lucky to have him leading that defense. So, you know, I'm excited for Alan Williams and he's fired up to be a Chicago bears coordinator as well. Uh, defensive lineman, Angela Blackson, second year man for Chicago did not practice today. Something to keep an eye on. There's been no reports so far, at least, from what I've seen that people have said, what's wrong with Blackson? 
but I hope that he is okay. Uh, linebackers, no new information. And the defensive backs, this one hurts a little bit. Uh, Second-year man Thomas Graham Jr. is dealing with a hamstring injury, and according to reports and from Matt Eberfuss in an earlier media interview, he will be out for a little while. So he might get put on the PUP list. He might be put on the IR. I hope Thomas Graham Jr. makes this roster because he had a giant second half last year, proving a lot of people wrong, barely making the practice squad after during the preseason. A lot of people thought he was going to do really well. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for Thomas Graham Jr., but he's he was looking good so far, just a bump in the road, and he will be back on track before we know it. So stay tuned for that. We'll keep our eye on Thomas Graham Jr. moving forward. But with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. This filming ends at 1237 Central Time. There's been really no new information according to Bear's Twitter that I have seen so far. Let's give it one more look while we're with you guys. And also, I hope that you guys are all having a great summer so far. As I, again, I still can't believe that it's August. It's absolutely insane. Um, let's see. Let's look. Uh, defensive end. Uh, Al Kanan Muhammad says that it, he is a player open to con- constructive criticism and becomes easier to listen, especially with the current Bears coaching staff. Again, pads are coming on tomorrow. Very excited about that. And also, he was a force to be reckoned with this past th- today in a two minute drill. He's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love this guy. Uh, Zach Pearson asked him uh, how many sacks he had. He smiled and said, I had a couple on the defense. I mean, on the offensive line. So, um, ooh, and then one more thing I want to put out there is that the defense is already tar- starting to talk smack to the wide receivers. According to Brian Pringle at Bears practice today, Eddie Jackson get blasted Brian Pringle if it would have been a game, he got in his face that a lot of guys told me on defense, I would have been in the hospital with how excited they are to be in pads tomorrow. So I hope they don't hit them too hard because we want to keep these guys going, but the defense is hungry and I'm hoping that they're going to be popping some people this upcoming week, uh, this upcoming season. So again, with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of just another year, Chicago. My name is Nick Brody and we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.